Good Monday evening, everybody. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with a lot of stuff to talk about for tonight. We've got, again, a decent amount of activity going on where it comes to fog in the Mid-South for this evening. And we've also got the possibility of some more winter weather heading back our direction after a brief warm-up into the course of the next couple of days. How warm? Well, a little bit above normal, that's for certain. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. We've had a dense fog advisory just issued within the Hour, and we'll talk more about what that means for travelers coming up here in just a little bit. Could even be some worse conditions north of us into parts of Missouri, Illinois, and Iowa. Could be some freezing fog showing up overnight, but no advisories issued on that as of the top of the hour. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Plus, if you've wanted to know more about severe weather, maybe you've just moved here, maybe you'd like to know a little bit more about what type of weather that this area has to offer, we'd love to help you out with that. And stay tuned because the new sky warn meetings from the National Weather Service in Memphis have just been issued and we'll tell you where the first four meetings will be coming up here pretty soon so stick around for more on that. If you've never tuned in here before this is our exclusive video weather blog called Weather Overtime. We do this mainly nightly. We try to do it about twice a day when we're able to do so. If you can't stick around for the whole forecast check the blue bar in the bottom of the screen as the information goes scrolling by there. You can also catch our seven day forecast at wreg.com slash weather and more information drop me an email email at austin.onic at wreg.com. Also put your location and if you've got them, temperatures, your rain gauge amounts, anything like that, drop those into the comment section. We'd love to see more about what you've gotten out there in the way of rainfall. Going to the fourth rock of the, from the sun briefly for right now, the latest weather information from the Curiosity rover reported back just a couple of days ago. New updates should be coming up tomorrow. High temperature on Mars a couple of days ago was minus 5 and a low temperature of 108 degrees below zero from the Curiosity rover and seeing ground temperatures out there pretty doggone chilly as well at minus one Fahrenheit for a high temperature on the ground there. If you'd like to see more of this information, very easy to get it. Weather on the fourth rock from the sun. I mean, think about this for a second. Getting weather from Mars, that's pretty doggone cool when you think about it. Mars.nasa.gov and you can track this information for yourself via the Curiosity rover. Great opportunity to see more there. Meanwhile, back on this planet, we've got a little bit of drizzle left over from this evening, but otherwise not really seen too much in the way of major amounts of problems when it comes to rainfall. Most of the drizzle should be heading on out of the picture and seeing again the possibility of just some fog into the evening hours for tonight. So that's going to be again the possibility of not really too much of a major concern but you still want to allow for some extra time, especially tomorrow morning when you're driving on that commute to work or school, just to be on the safe side. Thanks to everybody for checking in across the Mid-South area from Memphis and beyond. Thank you very much on that. Jacob Fisher, what schools are out in Hickory, North Carolina? Not too sure. That's a little bit outside of our area. Sorry about that. Uh, thanks to everybody from around Senatobia. Angie Rose, welcome to the show. Got a roll tide from Camille Sills. Thank you very much on that. And I thought I saw here here. Yes, Lenny, Lindsay, Bailey, a vote for the dogs tonight, and another one from Amy Lee Huntington. So everybody checking in for what's going on with the football game tonight, and hopefully again, going to be seeing some decent weather for the trip home on that worse. Currently, again, seeing the possibility of more fog out there. View from the Ole Miss campus, seeing a little bit more fog than what we saw a little bit about maybe an hour or so ago. So could see some more visibility problems into parts of northern Mississippi later on this evening. This is the view from Germantown. That's Poplar Pike, Germantown Road right there. Usually you can see the towers of Poplar and Mendenhall on the horizon. Not the case at this time. All the water towers just barely visible north of Germantown High School for this evening. And temperatures are way above freezing, so we don't have any freezing fog here. But we do still have a bit of a breeze out there, so we do have a little bit of a wind chill going on into and around the area for tonight. This is what it looks like from downtown. Steam fog off the Mississippi River and very low cloud deck at this time, reflecting the light of Big River Crossing and a few hardy souls out there early this evening, even though it was a trifle breezy out across much of the area. So again, not seeing too much in the way of major amounts of visibility problems yet, but could be worse overnight. View from I-40 and Witten Road, live view from our transmitter tower camera and showing traffic light and moving along pretty well. Visibility also okay. Also the view from I-240 and Airways from our airport camera from Memphis International Airport, tower and terminal. Still can see it for right now. 
now, and we're also seeing no delays to report at this time. So good news on that. That information via the FAA, if you'd like to get that on your system. And improving conditions right now, JFK seeing major delays again tonight, but that's starting to improve by just a bit. San Francisco a little bit delayed, but that's improving, and no major problems across the rest of the continental United States, so very good news on that. Visibility in the Mid-South much worse than what it was just an hour or so ago. Visibility north of I-40 dropped down to about zero by about 6.30, 7 o'clock tonight, and much of the rest of the area was about two to three miles not the case right now. Best visibility, just about two miles around Tupelo. Rest of the area getting socked in. Half-mile visibility reported at the area around Memphis International Airport. So again, fog going to be a bit of a problem into the overnight at this time. Uh, Ronald Coleman driving from Blytheville to Nashville on Friday or to fly to Boston for the Titans game. You think we'll have issues driving to Nashville? Quite possibly could be some problems there. It depends on what time Friday you're going. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. Larry, Lanny Graham, Daytona 500 next month. Sorry for squinting, but two-point typeface on uh, the – Facebook readout and bifocals don't work too well uh, going on through here. It looks like we're getting, again, a lot of votes for the Tide and a lot of votes for the Dogs tonight, so good luck to both teams there. June Finley Edwards, why aren't we getting snow anymore? Well, we do get it. It just happens a lot less than what it used to. Uh, my wife, as a school teacher, likes to call that the snow bagel. It seems like the snow goes around us very well most of the time. We'll talk about that coming up in just a little bit. Dense fog advisory issued again just about an hour ago for West Tennessee and northeast Arkansas, basically along and north of the Tennessee-Mississippi state line. Still not seeing a visibility problem here immediately, but if you're anywhere between, say, Forest City and Corinth, I would expect a possible advisory coming up later on tonight. If that happens, we'll bring that to you. Now, north of us, this is where the problem originally was. And if you're traveling this direction, it's a lot colder up here, and there's a possibility we could see some freezing fog taking place into parts of southern Missouri. That could make things very slick and very dangerous very quickly if those temperatures drop enough. So if you're heading anywhere north of the Missouri-Arkansas state line, a lot of extra time and a lot of paying attention to the temperatures around your area. And if it starts getting slippery, time to pull off the roadway and find someplace safe to park just to be on the safe side there. Lisa cannon Mergle. What about wind? Sure, we'll take some wind reports if you got them, and we'll talk more about the breeze coming up here uh, into in a little bit. Willie and Pamela Turner, is it supposed to get bad on Friday? We'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. Right now, we're not seeing anything in the way of really heavy amounts of rainfall. Most of that is gone from the metro area. Storm Tracker 3S showing little, if anything, right now. The heaviest activity by far, we've got a little bit of leftover drizzle into and around portions of northeast Mississippi. But that's about it as what's left of some of that air begins to move its way out of that particular area. It doesn't look like much, but there is still some light drizzle coming down here from about Tishomingo County down to just north of Jackson. Now, the heaviest activity by far is all the way over to around Atlanta, dropping to the south and then way on up into around the Carolinas and the Virginias. So we're basically done with the rainfall for right now, so not really seeing too much of anything else out there in the way of rainfall. David Bruno used the weather machine to bring us snow. I'll do my best to just see what I can, leave the root beer in the usual place, and I'll see what I can do on that. Thanks to everybody else for checking on in for the area for tonight. few votes for snow out there. Uh, not really seeing too much in the way of votes for heavy amounts of snow. And thanks to everybody for dropping in. If you're in the Mid-South, that's great. If you're outside of the Mid-South, anywhere from around here, that's wonderful. But if you're checking in from parts unknown, drop your location in. We'd love to know where you're from and what the weather's like where you are. We had a few people yesterday from Australia, a few from Scotland, and a couple of others from around Hong Kong, if I'm not mistaken. So again, if you'd like to drop your location wherever it may be, let us know more about what you've got going on there and ask your questions about the forecast for the Mid-South south into the area there. Vicki Chalk Metter like to place an order for spring. 70 days and just a few hours away, so 70 hours plus some change on that until we hit springtime for those of you who are looking ahead for that at this time. Uh, the other channel is calling for possible six inches. Suzette Perry, 
well, that's what the other channel, whoever they are, can do if they want to, but that's not what I'm doing for right now. We're still way too far out for stuff like that. Anything that goes way too far in advance with the forecasting, that's a term that we use around meteorological circles called wish casting. And yes, there is that potential for getting a lot of stuff like that, but I'll just bet you that if you watch that other channel that you're talking about, and believe me, I hate making those quotation marks in the air as much as anybody else, I'll just bet that that forecast changes a lot differently as you go into the next few days. So they can do what they want to. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about what I think about coming up here in just a little bit, so stay tuned for more on that. Temperatures, again, for much of the area, we did get a decent amount of rainfall, not exactly gully washer material, but we did see, again, temperatures warm enough for anything involving just plain rainfall, and about two-thirds of an inch plus at Crestview Middle School in Covington, mid to upper 40 to around 50, about half an inch more or less across parts of the rest of the Mid-South, and temperatures are dropping a little bit. Got some 30s around Osceola High School, but I doubt we're going to get anywhere close to the freezing mark tonight. That's going to go on way to our north for later on this evening. We'll talk more about that in just a little while. Let's go ahead and run the numbers into the next about 48 hours and give you an idea as to what's going on uh, into and around the area for tonight. Again, temperatures will be a bit on the brisk side. Uh, Lisa Cannon Mergle animals, yes, make certain those are taken care of. Very good idea uh, on that. Wesley Stultz, a case of root beer for a foot of snow. We'll open negotiations. Thank you very much. Uh, that's a good opening offer right there. Thank you very much, but make certain it's the good stuff. Diet root beer to me is an abomination, so not even going to come close to that. Temperatures by, again, the time we get into around daybreak tomorrow morning, Todd Demers will be on the air with the forecast, and it's going to be a bit on the brisk side tomorrow. Now, the winds continue out of the northeast. The winds, the moving lines on screen showing the winds tomorrow out of the northeast. I think the computer is kind of playing it a little bit too safe. The wind's actually going to be turning a little bit farther to the southeast tomorrow and that's going to bring the temperatures up by just a bit. So these numbers, along with the fact that the computer with these gray colors, all that cloud cover out there, the computer thinks it's going to be a lot colder tomorrow based on the fact that the sunlight's going to be blocked out by some of the clouds. I think it's going to be in the lower 50s because the winds are going to be bringing up the temperatures up from here. So I think the computer models here are playing it a little bit too safe where it comes to the uh, temperatures into tomorrow. So we'll see what goes on uh, for the temperatures. But mainly lower 50s from what I can see, computer kind of hedging its bets by just a little bit. Now tomorrow night, past about News Channel 3 at 10, we start to see more rain returning back to the area. It's not going to be much. We could even see a sprinkle or two early tomorrow afternoon in minor locations here and there across the Mid-South, just a minor chance, I should say, but nothing in the way of major problems coming on through, so good news on that. Now, forecast into bright and early, well, semi-bright anyway, early definitely tomorrow morning. Visibility is going to be, it looks like, near zero according to the fog forecast, so a little bit of extra time to get to where you're going tomorrow would be a very good idea. Tune in to Corey Ventura. She'll have more on your forecast into and around the rest of the morning and keep you updated on what's going on with time saver traffic, and of course, Todd will have more on your forecast. Skipping ahead to the end of the week, taking a look at first, notice the temperatures here. The green indicates very mild air. The purple and blue showing again that cold wave of energy, that cold air making its way, excuse me, back into the Mid-South. And that's going to be the big thing that we notice. You're going to get up on Friday morning with fairly mild temperatures, actually, but then this cold air starts to dive into the area. And as it does, moisture from the Gulf of Mexico rides north up, up the top of that. And that's where we have to see what goes on into the next few days. Right now, it is still way, way, way too early to start talking about numbers on the ground for precipitation chances because those will change up and down over the next few days. It pays to really kind of get a lot closer to say what's going to be happening. The signs of precipitation are there. Talking about precipitation, about maximum, minimum models, stuff like that, I can give you a range of zero to as much as 50 feet, and all of that could be considered, but it's not going to help you out in the slightest, so we're not going to talk about that specifically just yet. The main thing is, as this moisture comes through, rain first, and then by Friday around drive time, starts to change over to some form of winter-type precipitation, and then overspreads the rest of the Mid-South. It looks like heavier activity going to be going on north of Memphis and Shelby County, into and around portions of West Tennessee, and into and around portions of Northeast 
eastern areas of Arkansas. There's even a sign here way back up. Okay, touch screen isn't working tonight. Sorry about that. More chances of some heavier activity going on well back on up to our north. And again, this is going to be the best possibility for snow. What about freezing rain and sleet? That's a different story, and it depends on both how thick this cold air is going to be. If it's cold several thousand feet up and that moisture moves in, then all that stuff drops on down to, onto the ground, frozen, and it's not that much of a problem. But if there's going to be just enough of a warm layer up there, some of this stuff could fall as sleet or freezing rain, and that's a bit of a problem. And this is an updated computer model that is showing more of a frozen type precipitation, as in sleet or freezing rain potential. Potential. And this right here is starting to concern me by just a little bit here. Uh, this is the, the strongest signature we've seen here so far. Now, granted, again, the computer models run from one end to the other. Some are a little bit more hesitant. Some are a lot more bolder where it comes to calling for different types of precipitation. But if this is the signature that we're reading this far out, then we need to be concerned and pay attention Never a time for panic on these type of things. And again, as of right now, we're going to be keeping a very close eye on this for right now. So again, we're going to be keeping in stock as to what we see on here. There's going to be potential for just about anything. But what we wind up with eventually, we're still about another 48 to 72 hours out before we can say with any certainty what we may be looking for. So stay tuned to us, and we'll keep you updated here at News Channel 3 to keep you updated as to what's going on. Let's run the numbers on the 7 to 10 day forecast. This right here is pretty close to normal for this time of the year, back in the lower 50s. And again, rain chances will begin mainly late, but we could see a shower or two uh, into and around the potential for the area there. Uh, Patrice Partey, hope I'm saying that right. Can you tell them to hold any frozen precip till we can miss a school day? signed all SES teachers. Well, I'm, I'm married to a seventh grade science teacher, so believe me, there's a standing order placed for one of those along with uh, all of her compatriots as well, so back up at Bartlett City Schools as well. Uh, schools may be out. Lisa Cannon Margle, way too early to talk about that for right now. Uh, for the time being, let's see, who do we have here? Christian Faye Bush. Uh, weather giving you a migraine headache. My wife gets those from time to time. Hopefully you get a, some relief on that for right now. And everybody else checking in, thank you very much uh, to keep an eye on what's going on in and around the Mid-South. Uh, let's see, Teresa Dean, don't blame the weatherman because Mother Nature is bipolar and she gets cranky from time to time. That's decently true, but uh, we do our best to help out on that. Right now we're seeing temperatures very much on the mild side. If you're tired of the cold air and want to get some relief, we've got that for you, but... Here's the thing, don't get too used to it. Temperatures will be back in the 60s with more chances of rain by Wednesday. Thursday, we get back into the mid-60s. Again, that's way above normal for this time of the year. And then as we go into Friday, that's when the cold air arrives. Into Thursday night, Friday morning, temperatures drop into the lower to mid-30s for the metro area. That, again, is going to be changing in the next few days as well. I've got a feeling the cold air is going to be blasting in here very early, so we may see some lower numbers than this. At some time on Friday, that rain changes over to some form of mixed precipitation, and that's where we could see some problems out there, again, with the numbers staying only in the mid to upper 30s at best, and that, again, is what worries me, that we could see some just warm enough temperatures to maybe cause some precipitation changes that could cause some problems down on the surface, as in freezing rain or sleet. That's what worries me more than anything else, but again, stay tuned. We'll keep you updated. Now, good news and bad news for the holiday. Next week, we have have had over the last few days, the temperatures looked really good for Monday for a day on for volunteering service for the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. The last couple of computer models have really dropped the numbers on the temperatures, so it's going to be dry. That's great news for the volunteers that will be outdoors picking up trash and debris and helping to spruce up people's houses and helping their elderly neighbors. Whatever it is you can do to get out and make a difference, it's going to be a great day for that and every other day of the year for that matter. But temperatures will be a little colder for that day on for service with temperatures going only around 40 degrees, so we may be a little bit on the cold side there. Other chances of rainfall sticking around as we go toward the middle to end part of next week. Again, minimal chances in Tuesday and about Thursday afternoon, but beyond that, we just don't really have a great deal of anything going on out there for tonight. Rita Allen, cool, drizzling rain and fog in Wynn, Arkansas. Thank you very much uh, for that at this point in time. Ma Dukes, it's winter, bring it, good attitude, I like that, very good. And everybody else checking in for this morning, voting yes or no for snow tonight, thank you very much uh, for that. Again, we're right on the edge, right about ready to make our way into severe weather season. 
for this time of the year. The main season lasts from roughly about now, from about January through about April into early May, give or take. It kind of depends on what kind of systems we get through here. The National Weather Service offers a program called Skywarn. It's totally free. Your, your tax dollars, my tax dollars pay for it. It's one of the best uses of tax dollars I've ever seen, in my not-so-humble opinion, and a good opportunity to teach the public about what to look for before severe weather happens. And if you'd like to know more about this, there's going to be about a dozen of these classes coming up in the next several weeks, and they're going to be all around the Mid-South area, so you will have the opportunity to take these classes. They'll also be located online, and we'll talk more about that as we go down the line. The first one will be held at the Emmett Till Interpretive Center Tuesday, February 13th. That's going to be in Sumner, Mississippi at 6 p.m. there. Next one will be in Cross County at the Wind Fire Department, uh, 1111 North Falls Boulevard at 6.30 p.m. a week after that on Tuesday, February 20th. Thursday, February 22nd at 6.30 p.m. in Lexington, Tennessee at Henderson County Emergency Operations Center. And the next one after that will be in Gibson County, Tennessee at Trenton, 1246 Manufacturers Row at the Emergency Operations Center. Again, this is a volunteer effort. You don't get paid for it, but if there's any kids out there in like junior high or high school, this looks really good to have on a resume at some point in time to say you took time out and effort to help your community when severe weather was a threat. So something to think about there. For parents wanting to take their kids to something like this, again, I've seen storm spotters volunteer about as young as maybe about seven or eight years old that they have a bent towards science and their parents have an idea about community service. Uh, usually not too much younger than about third grade, somewhere in there, but somewhere around that area, kids can participate participate in this. Lasts about an hour, totally free. Again, as I said, all you do is show up and take the course. You get a special phone number to call the National Weather Service in Memphis when you see something out there. This is not a chase course. want to make certain that is understood right now. Again, if you want to learn how to chase storms, you got to do that with experts and professionals to know what you're getting involved in. This teaches you what to look for and how to report that information back to the National Weather Service. Your information called in from anywhere around the Mid-South goes to the National Weather Service and then goes out to the emergency authorities, goes out to people like me on the news station so we can let everybody know by broadcast and over the internet what's going on. So your information could help save life. So consider that if you think about taking these courses. If you haven't taken a course like this in the last few years, something again, you could again do a very good job of getting an update on stuff like this. And if you have any questions, again, email me. The email address is right here in the blue bar, or you can call the National Weather Service in Memphis and ask them about what to expect. It's a great opportunity to do so. And we'll post more about this over the next several days and weeks as we get into severe weather season. Catch my forecast bright and early tomorrow morning starting at 8 a.m. Bob and Josh on Talkback Live Sports Chat for the Mid-South area mainly sports chat, but they do a lot of community service events and a lot of news as well uh, into the around the area. If you can't catch their signal because you're out of the uh, listening area for that particular signal for AM 730, dial them up online, talkbacklivenetwork.org. Great guests talking about Mid-South sports, Tigers, Rebels, Vols, whoever you root for, they'll cover them out there, so tune in bright and early in the morning. And, of course, our own Todd Demers will have an update on the fog and the potential for winter weather coming up bright and early tomorrow morning on News Channel 3 Daybreak. Coming up in about 10 minutes, join me on my personal Facebook page, facebook.com slash austinonic, W-R-E-G, and we'll have more about whether where the troops are. This is turning out to be a nice little surprise that a lot of people are getting uh, behind because a lot of people have friends and loved ones in and around the Mid-South area. This is something that we can, again, uh, show you what the weather is like into and around places where American troops are serving and you can get the information about what's going on for more of a connection if you have a friend, family member, or loved one overseas. Again, if you can do a little bit more uh, up in that area. Facebook user, I don't know who you are, but why do we have storm spotter training when we have all those hot air so-called weather experts to tell us the weather? Well, because, unfortunately, weather radar doesn't tell us everything, and because my psychic powers are slightly below par, so I can't reach out with my mental beams and tell more about what's going on out in the community, we need you as a volunteer. Well, maybe not you. You don't sound like you're 
too much in the volunteer spirit. But everybody else, if you'd like to become a volunteer for Skywarn, we could use your help. The more people we have out there that are trained and ready to go when it comes to severe weather in the Mid-South, we would love to know that you're out there and spotting because your information can help save a life. That's why we need all those people out there to help us do the job to let you know what's going on. So hopefully that answered your question by just a little bit. And thank you very much for being curious enough to ask on that. We'll have an update on the forecast again tonight on News Channel 3 at 10. So stay tuned for more on that. And stay tuned for more with Todd Demers tomorrow morning on News Channel 3 Daybreak. Thanks to everybody for joining us on our video weather blog, Weather Overtime. And sticking around for more with News Channel 3 on air and online throughout the rest of the evening.